Let me know when you see the little red light and then I'll know that we are hot. And I've got my Facebook um, page going on here and I think we're live, yeah? Yes, yes, okay, wonderful. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for hanging in there with us. It's been quite a fun and exciting adventurous morning for us. But we're here and we are so grateful to be here with you. Uh, I see the numbers logging on. Let me know that you're here by leaving a comment or a thumbs up or a heart or some little thing like that and then I can, I can see you. We had um, interesting little uh, tricky hoops this morning to jump through and here we are. We're very acrobatic, that's the good news. So <laughs> we've managed. Good morning, beloved souls. Welcome in, welcome in. Happy Sunday. I'm so glad to meet again. It's always my joy to be here. My name is Amy Van Ling and I am the spiritual director here at Brentwood Inspired Living Center. Welcome, everybody is welcome here. We celebrate everybody, everybody, exactly where you are in your path. We offer a fresh perspective on spirituality. We are a fun, safe, and healing community where you can embrace the unfoldment of your best and most inspired life. We are so glad you're joining with us. I have my phone here in my hand. As I do every Sunday, that is where I catch you. I see you. Uh, thank you, David. David says, take a step back and relax. No worries, as Dr. Robbins might say. He was saying that. <laughs> uh, hi, Denise and David. Yes, we are all together. Good morning, good morning. I appreciate all of your patience with us this morning. We're learning as we go all the time. You think we're almost a year on Zoom and yet we get to learn more all the time. So um, I see you here. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, everybody logging in. I know we said 1030, but we were ready. So we thought, well, let's just jump on. We can probably get on schedule and still have our workshop at 1130. So let everybody know that we're on and text somebody if you see that somebody isn't here. So um, also like our page, keep all the activity going on our page. We welcome you in to our sacred space. Yay, our theme for this month is resilience. So I posted um, about resilience this week on our Facebook page and a song, which I love and we're gonna get to hear today from Asher, I'm so excited about that. Yay, good morning everybody. Thank you for popping on with us. Apologies for the delay. It was just an opportunity for us to have a little fun this morning. <laughs> That's how I'm looking at it. So I am always, always elated to have Dr. Shawnee Robbins with us. He's always doing amazing things in the world and we are so grateful to have you here with us this morning to glean the wisdom, all the wisdom he has to share with us. Johnny is the founder of Wisdom Therapy, and today his talk is, every day is Valentine's Day, living an ambitious, wisdom-filled model of love and relationships. And who uh, can't benefit from that topic? <laughs> and Shawnee has a workshop planned for us at 1130, and I think because we were just so snazzy with getting all of this figured out, we're going to still um, be able to make that time at 1130. I would say don't miss it. Um, I know his workshops at Stanford Phillips. So here we have the opportunity to jump easy peasy right onto Zoom and learn. So thank you, Shawnee, for being with us. We appreciate you so much. Good morning, Paris. <laughs> You're making me laugh, Paris. I'm so glad you guys are here. I am overjoyed when Asher is with us. Such a genuine, kind, beautiful soul. Did you see him? He had he was the one that had to step up this morning and let everybody know we were having technical difficulties. He was the only one that had a nice, clear sound. So <laughs> thank you, Asher. He was kind of thrown into the mix with that and he just stepped right up. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. If you don't follow Asher on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, I suggest you do because he has been posting so many heartfelt uh, posts and amazing songs and breathtaking photos. So thank you, Asher, for being with us. I appreciate you so much. And we have our very own Ron Vera with us to share words of abundance and our inspirational story this morning. So thank you, Ron, for your presence and your essence. We appreciate and love you dearly. 
Good morning, everybody. Jump on with us. I know we're we're a little off with our timing, but I know everybody will find us and see that we're here live. I see you all. Good morning, bright ones. Welcome into our space. If you missed our community meeting last week, we have news for you about our expansion project. We are eagerly stepping into something very new and exciting. So watch your mailboxes for more info in the next couple of weeks. Um, Jan says, thank you so much, Asher, with little uh, heart eyes face. <laughs> Good morning, Karen. I'm glad you're here. Good morning, Nancy. Thank you. She says, you sound and look great. I always like to know that we're <laughs> broadcasting through very clearly. Yay, everybody. I'm so glad that we're together. So I know that we're all hearing about what's going on in Texas. If you'd like to help in some way, check out miniesfoodpantry.org and soon to be up is a website called Sending Love to Texas. These are two organizations mobilizing boots on the ground action right there in Texas. I heard the founders of both of these organizations speaking yesterday. Um, and I really, I love the organizations uh, that are like this because I know all of our dollars go straight to the cause and you know, um, and the big ones have their their purpose too. So they're all they're all great. They're all uh, working in love. Uh, these are just two that I learned about that I felt really um, called to share with everybody. Good morning, Luinda. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, John. Nice to see you. Good morning, Maria. <clears throat> How's that little baby grandbaby doing? She recently became a grandma. How fun! Welcome in, everybody. Um, I would like to invite everyone to remember that how we show up in the world is so important. It makes an impact, our thoughts, our words, how we speak about people and situations always have a ripple effect. I was thinking about this in, um, <clears throat> in thinking about something that happened this week in our area. It was kind of a negative thing that was posted all over the news outlets. And I, I uh, was thinking, you know, when we uplift people, when we choose to be loved, that's really what makes all the difference. And I personally don't know a single person that has never said or done something they wouldn't possibly take back. So um, if we remember that, uh, it's helpful to remember that before we ever decide to throw a stone, right? So <laughs> I know this community is uh, always viewing through that lens of love and um, my hope is that that all ripples out. So grateful to be together. Good morning, beautiful souls. Thank you, John. We appreciate you. Maria says she is adorable. I know she's adorable. Those pictures are precious. Um, those organizations were Minnie's Food Pantry, and I posted that on our Facebook page, the link. And then the other one was sendinglovetotexas.org. And their page is actually not quite up yet, but they're working on it. And they're going to be selling T-shirts and things like that. So, so let's get started. I have my phone here. I'm going to keep checking on everybody. And... Uh, and reading your comments and looking at your beautiful faces. So I'll leave that right here. I invite you to feel into our mission statement and drop, drop into your heart. We are an open, heart-centered spiritual community honoring the one presence within us. We welcome all to connect, grow, and expand in wisdom, compassion, and love. Thank you for being with us this morning. I'm going to hand the screen over to Ron this morning for our inspirational reading. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Amy. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm going to be reading a passage from the Daily Om. As it turns out, it's entitled Divine Resilience. But this morning, we had to develop Zoom resilience. So resilience is abounding in many different forms. So again, from the Daily Om on Divine Resilience. And it reads, at certain points in our relationships with others, defensiveness and hurt can arise. Often, this is connected to feeling and being too vulnerable. One way to address this vulnerability is by accessing the power of visualization, by imagining and forming an inner vision of continuous empowering energy flowing to us from the universe itself. By visualizing this energy with our breath, traveling and entering our crown chakra through our minds, touching our hearts, 
reaching and catalyzing every cell of our bodies, affirming that this divine energy, this divine resilience infuses and renews us with inner strength and empowerment, providing us the courage to reopen our hearts and our minds to others. With access to this inner strength and resiliency, we feel more win willing and inwardly resolved about opening ourselves again to others. As we know, our fear of being hurt or rejected can often cause us to close down and to guard our feelings from others. But doing so also closes us off from the intimate moments of genuine connection that we can enjoy and savor in our relationships. If we instead build up this inner resiliency and constant connection to universal energy, we can feel strengthened by the divine love that has the power to carry us through setbacks and disappointments and also to regain our sense of wholeness. With the clear vision of inner strength and resiliency, we'll be able to connect more confidently with our divinity and with others in our lives. And so it is. Thank you so much, Ron. You're welcome. Yes, this morning I, I it all it all tuned in together with the resilience theme and and the Zoom <laughs> this morning. <laughs> what a great time we've had! I'm going to hand the screen over to Asher for our first song this morning. Thank you so much, Asher. Appreciate, Appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah, so I just learned this song like ten minutes before jumping on Zoom, so hopefully it goes all right. I had no idea that you posted it either. That's cool. I am resilient, I trust the movement, I negate the chaos, uplift the negative, I show up at the table again and again and again, I close my mouth and learn to listen. I've got my roots down, 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 deep. I've got my roots down, 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 deep. So what are we doing here? What has been done? What are you gonna do about it when the world comes undone? Well, my voice feels tiny and I'm sure so does yours. Put us all together, make a mighty roar. roar. I am resilient. I trust the movement. I negate the chaos. Uplift the negative I show up at the table Again and again and again I'll close my mouth and learn to listen 
so beautiful and poignant. I am so grateful that you just learned that song. <laughs> it's amazing. So talented. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Okay, I'm going to hand the screen back over to Ron for our prosperity blessing this morning. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Amy. I'd like to invite us to take a nice deep breath into our heart centers. Anchoring ourselves in our bodies. And at this time, I'd like to invite you to join me now in our prosperity blessing. We come together today, opening our hearts and our minds to the one spirit, the light, the infinite mind and heart, knowing that there is only one power and one life, and that is the life of spirit. We affirm that we are one with spirit and that there is no one and nothing that is separate from this oneness. We are one with that infinite mind and heart that has created all that is. We know the divine qualities of peace, of love, compassion, wisdom, and abundance are already within each of us. And we embrace those qualities now. We go forth in the truth of who and what we are, saying yes to our divinity, yes to our harmony, well-being, love, and prosperity. We affirm that our beloved community's consciousness is expanding beyond our wildest dreams and imaginings. We are dynamically transforming, moving, and changing with shared confidence, unanimity, and joy. We step forward with love and in anticipation of our unfoldment and support our amazing expansion through our time, talents, and treasures. And with the greatest gratitude, we accept this transformation of consciousness for ourselves, for our community, for our world. We know that it is done. And for this, we give heart-centered thanks. And simultaneously, we now release, surrender, let go, and we allow spirit to do its perfect work. We trust the universe to provide for us each and every moment, and it is done. So thank you for joining in the spirit of, the, of our prosperity blessing. And given our Zoom transformation, I'm going to bypass um, our community announcements and just to encourage each of us to participate at what, whatever level we can, be it online, with each other in person, to remember to generously give so that our community can foster and thrive. Lastly, uh, as we consciously connect with the energies of transformation and expansion in consciousness, let us remember as a community to practice and embody what we're now creating as community affirmations on a daily basis on our own and also together. And we're doing this every Friday at 10 in the morning for approximately 10 minutes. I think Amy calls it 1010. And so we'll be going on to our Sunday morning Zoom link and all are welcome. And as we do this every Friday, the energy is going to build. So to conclude, I wanna share our first two affirmations that we're beginning to embody. And I think they're being sent out or they've been sent out already to the community. The first affirmation reads as such, with open hearts, and open minds, we as an inspired living community are transforming ourselves as we speak. And the second affirmation is, we are dynamically moving, changing and expanding with confidence, unanimity, joy and gratitude. So we're gonna practice this and embody this 
and envision a beautiful, beautiful setting for us to be in at some future point. In the meantime, we anchor ourselves in our hearts with each other. And so it is. Thank you so much, Ron. I appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing everybody on Fridays at 10 a.m. for 10 minutes. Jump into our Zoom link that is always listed on our homepage and have some fun with us. I'm going to hand the screen over to Asher for our last song this morning. Thank you, Asher. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, if anybody has any headphones they can plug in, I highly suggest it for this instrument. Uh, either way, just tune into your heart, close your eyes, and allow it to take you over if you can. I'm going to take this off. Thank you. Thank you. That is, that so, is so, so, beautiful. so beautiful. There we go. No more echo. <laughs> Thank you, Asher. That's so beautiful. You could just listen to that for hours. Thank you both, Ron and Asher, for setting the tone here this morning, bringing our energy um, into such a beautiful high vibration and sharing your precious souls with us. We appreciate you both. I will see you on the other side, <laughs> the Facebook side of of this interesting technology we have going on here. I appreciate you both. I'll see you soon.
I am so glad to be here with Dr. Shawnee Robbins. Um, I can't wait for this talk. I, the last time you were here with us, you got us in Facebook jail. So we discussed earlier that <laughs> we wouldn't be showing any YouTube videos and having Facebook FBI after us this time. <laughs> you keep us on our toes. We like that. Um, so I will read you a little bit about Shawnee because he's an amazing human being. Um, Dr. Shawnee Robbins is a licensed psychologist and an instructor at Stanford University. I think this is actually an old, old bio because he's an instructor at many um, colleges now. He's published many articles and book chapters on topics such as stress reduction, anger management, and conflict resolution. He's a founder and director of Wisdom Therapy and a truly remarkable human being. And I am so grateful that he is here with us today to share his wisdom. So I'm going to pray us in and then hand the screen over to Shawnee and he's going to take us through our morning message. And then we're going to pop off of this link and pop onto our, our uh, workshop link right afterwards. So I invite you to uh, just take an intentional inhale and exhale any tension, anything heavy. I invite you into this morning to center in, to drop into your heart, let go of anything that is heavy on your shoulders, on your forehead, in your jaw, your hands, and just ground into the rhythmic deep breathing. Feel your breath, fill yourself with light. We're stepping into the flow, into harmony with ourselves, into harmony with life around us. We understand that we are one with the one power and the one presence and that power says yes to us, says yes to our thoughts and to our lives. We are receptive to all that is being revealed to us. We claim that this gathering of souls is uplifting, inspiring. We invite all the blessings in. We wrap our love around those in Texas and those everywhere who are wading through the storms of life right now. We are so grateful to join together in this powerful container of love and infinite possibilities and plentitude. Divine intelligence is moving in through and as each one of us this very moment. We cover Shawnee in love. We open our hearts and minds and souls to his message for us today. We are in deep gratitude. I release this word for the good of all. And so it is. Amen. Ashe. Namaste. Thank you everybody for being here. I'm gonna hand it over to Shawnee. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Amy. That's high, high praise from a wonderful person as yourself. So right back at you. As anyone can see, we formed our uh, mutual admiration society. So uh, people are welcome to join. So today's uh, theme, we're talking about relationships and the theme of the month is resilience. What I wanted to do is to offer a suggestion of how to view resilience in a slightly different way. Because resilience is often something people go after, saying, how can I be more resilient? In other words, how can I be in such a way that when I meet life's hardships, I cope with them better, more effectively. I succumb to them less. And what I'll posit in, in the talk today is that it, there's a more ambitious model than that, that just doing okay or just surviving is not enough. We want to thrive. We want to flourish. And so going after that and a consequence of that will be much higher resilience. So resilience will come along for the ride, but it won't be the thing we're going after. So let's, let's make that a kind of an over umbrella uh, model and ask ourselves, why is anything less than that thriving, flourishing, why is anything less acceptable? And so we'll start with a joke. And so a guy says, my wife and I have been married 47 years. And not once have we ever considered divorce. Murder, yes. But divorce, never. Uh, and so the jokes takes us, it's, it's uh, mixed, right? Because it's, um, it's both funny and sad that so many relationships uh, are so conflict, filled with conflict and uh, anger and insult and yelling and screaming and ill will 
And so we want to talk about what would, what does it take to do a lot more than that? Not just reducing yelling, screaming, name calling, and ill will, but dramatically shifting what we expect from relationships. What does it mean to thrive and flourish? And so uh, there is um, uh, the notion of a much more ambitious model has a nice metaphor. So. In 1954, up until 1954, no one ran the four minute mile. The mile was never formally run in less than four minutes. In 1954, a person by the name of Roger Bannister, age 25, ran a four minute mile, less than, uh, he ran a mile in three minutes, 59.5 59 sec 59 seconds. First time in history it's ever been officially recorded. Someone ran a time less than a four minute mile. A few weeks later, half a dozen others did the same. A few months later, dozens of others. A few years later, thousands of others. Now, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine that in just a few weeks, our species somehow magically evolved to run faster, right? What likely happened is that suddenly everybody knew that that was possible. And once that was known, people went after it. So the model here, this metaphor for us is that most people, including most therapists, think that relationship, inevitable in relationships is a high level of conflict, yelling, screaming, and the best we can do is do a good job in surviving when the yelling and screaming come, when the insults come, and they define resilience that way. And to what I wanted to communicate today is that that model is phenomenally lacking in ambition. And not only is not going after lower than a four minute mile, it's going after a 20 minute mile. And, and saying what happens when we're a little tired at the 20 minute mile, how can we be more resilient? So let's look at what it takes to do something that most people consider impossible until of course it's done and then it's inevitable. So the goal of relationships, sometimes people consider the priority of which is um, longevity, that amount of time we're together. I was talking to some of my students and graduate students about uh, different models of relationships. And I'm not, in another time, we could actually have a talk just on that. What are the different models of relationships? What assumptions are we making in terms of even the structure of relationships uh, in our culture? Um, but as we went through different models, I named one model that's very different from the ones that's typical of the West, and especially in the US. And one of my students said, well, what's the, uh, what are the examples of, for example, the couple you mentioned that are using that model, how long did the relationship last? And I said, two years. And they said, oh, two years, that means it's a failure, right? So that's interesting that two years is considered failure that uh, the amount of time is prioritized over everything else. Because if the amount of time is prioritized as the number one priority and something ending is considered a failure, then all of our lives will be failures at some point because our lives will end at some point. So that can't be the criteria. It's not how long you live, it's how you live. It's the quality of your life and that's why wellness, rather than longevity, I'm arguing, is the higher priority. No matter how long the relationship lasts, what is it that we're doing while we're together? Are we learning? Are we experiencing joy? Are we having the opportunity to help others with their learning and joy? And if that's happening day by day, that's amazing. However many days it lasts, that's amazing in the rest of our lives, and however many days it lasts. So the question then becomes who, how do we live making choices, who we live with, where we live, what we do on a daily basis and embodying the practices that we're trying to become. So practicing, most of you have heard from me this many times, opportunity to practice. Living a developmentally oriented life where every day is an opportunity to practice the kinds of skills that make life amazing and, and within that relationships amazing. And the skills like empathy and compassion, gratitude, humility, realism, ego transcendence, those are the kinds of things that make life amazing. 
And the reason we now know that is because of decades of psychological science. And so now each of these fields, the field of empathy, the field of mindfulness, the field of compassion, the field of gratitude, each has decades of psychological science that demonstrates if we do practice those and get really good at those, life transforms dramatically. It's the four minute mile. It's not just a little bit better, the impossible suddenly happens. And that's my encouragement to all of you to achieve that. Um, I think uh, it was either Einstein or someone who said that uh, every once in a while, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. Just to remind ourselves not to, to question what we think are our limits and, and why settle for less. So as we're going through this, um, there are a couple of things to note. Uh, one is that we're talking about two things here. One is not just running faster through training and practice, but eliminating the things in our lives that are contributing to us running slower. Uh, it's both to train in skill sets and nutrition and everything that makes us run faster, but also to take the weights off our legs. And the weights off our legs is toxic energy in our life. It's what we do and decisions we make that we're allowing that into our life on a regular basis. So, you know, when the, the, the less ambitious model is, um, <laughs> is another fun joke of some, one of the couple says to the other, I, I love you even more than I'm annoyed by you, which is a lot. Uh, it doesn't have to be that. There will always be some annoyance and frustrations in life, but they can be extremely low, very low, almost zero. It will never be zero, but the amounts matter. If it's 80% of life annoyance, that's a miserable life. When it's 5%, that's an amazing life. So rather than just talking about what we do with annoyance and the abstractions, talking about these skill sets of reducing them dramatically through decisions we make and practices we practice on a daily basis. So let me go through a few things that are highly relevant to having thriving relationships. Respect for self, self-esteem. That, that's going to be pivotal. If our self-esteem is low, we're going to look to our partner to make up for that, and nobody can. This is our work. We need. They can help. It helps if someone on a daily basis doesn't tell us you're full of it or doesn't tell us that you're nothing or insults us. That doesn't help. So being abused on a daily basis doesn't do much for our self-esteem. And that's where decisions of who we're with comes in. But even under the best of circumstances, if we're uh, connected and I am in relationship with angels, they can reassure us how wonderful we are. But until we are able to acknowledge that for ourselves, they can talk till they're blue in the face and we still won't quite believe it. So we have to do the heavy lifting and come to uh, our own recognition of the fact that we're not just not bad or damaged or we're fine. However we are, it's fine. Now let's move forward. There was a famous line, a Zen master said, you're perfect exactly as you are and you can be a little better, right? And so at full acceptance of self, just out of pure realism, why are we the way we are? Of course we are the way we are. A host of genetic predispositions and a history of environments and people we happen to be in touch with for our whole life, interacting together for decades. Voila, here's who we are now. Question is, who do we want to be next week, next month, next year? And we have dramatic control over that, much more than we think because the four minute mile seems impossible. But if we connect to folks that are inspiring, that remind us that the four minute mile is not a barrier, it's arbitrary. And we can do, not only is that not a barrier, there are no barriers after that as well. Some other things that are useful, secure attachment style. Secure attachment style from uh, the long um, science around that, what does that mean? Uh, the, the short and long of it is that sometime between the ages of one and two and onwards, our brain decides whether the world is safe and whether people are trustworthy. 
And if the answer is yes to both those questions in general, then that becomes our default. So when our partner comes home an hour late, our response is not, where the hell are you? What are you doing? I can't believe it's, are you okay? Because we're okay. We don't feel threatened. Even we feel empathy and compassion for them, not threatened for us. For, so that's secure attachment style. What does insecure attachment style look like? Our partner is an hour late. Who were you with? Where were you? Do you like them more than me? Are you telling me the truth or not? Insecure attachment style. That doesn't mean some of those questions are not relevant for people who've been abusive and so on over time either, or have been lying over time. So if someone asks, are you lying? Well, if the person lies 98% of the time, uh, that's a realistic question. But even a more interesting question is, why are we with someone who's lying 98% of the time? That's our choice, right? So it becomes less their problem than our problem. All right, so that's the other piece in terms of uh, secure attachment style. Um, respect for others. Respect is the opposite of contempt. John Gottman, one of the best known theorists and empirical researchers in the field of couples counseling, he wrote books like Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work and, and others. Um, he interviewed tens of thousands of couples over three decades uh, what he found uh, is uh, many findings, including the one that contempt, disrespect, contempt is a combination of disrespect and almost um, disgust. So disrespect comes in pretty high in predicting conflict and divorce in relationships. Well, so looking for what does it take to respect our partner? Well, choosing partners we deeply respect is would be a nice first start. In a, looking for things in our partners that we do respect rather than overly focusing on the things we don't. That's another, that would be a nice practice. Once we choose, once we choose who our partner is, then it changes the game. And then we try to optimize what we do and our wellness with that person. Unless of course we start questioning about whether we're compatible at that point, then the question becomes, then there are two questions. How do I optimize my wellness in this relationship and the second question, should I stay in this relationship? And what would it look like if I didn't? Um, there was a reciprocation to having positive relationships, right? A while back, I, I mentioned a fun line that I've been spending a lot of time with myself. I really like myself. I think I'm the one, right? The notion that we have to be okay with ourselves and when we're not, this goes back to the self-esteem question. And so as we're doing some of these practices, our skills go up. It's, we're not doing this just for the other person. In fact, we're doing it mostly for our skill building. Some of you have heard uh, one of my close friends, Fred Luskin's talk on forgiveness. We don't, his brilliant insight a couple of decades ago was to switch forgiveness from forgiving for the other person, forgiving for yourself. Why forgive? To just let go of those grievances. We're holding on to these bag of potatoes we're carrying over our shoulders. Let's put the bag down, right? And so you, the idea is to do that across the board. Put the oxygen mask on yourself first by practicing these skills. People often ask me, well, what if I do practice empathy? And I ask the person, well, how are you doing? What are you thinking? Well, how are you feeling? And they come back and they say, screw you. How can I practice then? The response, of course, is they just gave you yet one more opportunity to practice and one more, and after that, and one more. Now granted, if somebody in our relationship is giving us a whole lot of opportunities to practice, the simple reality is we have to ask ourselves, why am I still in this situation when someone is giving me mostly opportunities to practice resilience rather than joy? Because that is what it could be. It doesn't have to be a 20 minute mile. It can be a three minute mile but it seems impossible. Again, even to most therapists, why? Because most therapists don't run less than four minute miles. So they communicate that to their clients, which means the whole field, even the best, the so-called best practices of Western psychology are skewed into a less ambitious direction. 
So what's needed apparently is to live this stuff day in, day out yourself to actually experience that that's possible. And that's when you really know it's possible. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do. And that's what I try to do. And I have come to recognize that accepting less than that is not doing ourselves justice or to the other person either, because we're enabling them by allowing that kind of lack of skill to exist. And so it's, it's a lose, lose for, for everybody. There was a, there's a fun joke of a husband says, I was a fool when I married you. And the wife says, I know dear, but I was in love, so I didn't notice. Uh, you know, this kind of dynamic, as funny as it is, and it is funny, it's when it's recurring and, it's, and when it's not said as a joke, it's not that funny, right? And the things that follow up from that are not that funny. And, uh, and we can look at skill sets, like John Gottman again talks about something like, what is it? So genuinely listening, orienting to your partner. So when a partner says something, he did these experiments where he, um, inter he had people interviewed for an hour and videotaped it. And then he had other people view the videotape and, and try to predict if this couple were to get, uh, get a divorce in the next year or two. And he found that when he, that, that they were able to do that to something like 90 to 95% probability. So in that hour, once he started honing in of what to look for and the key features like respect versus contempt, uh, like orienting towards a person rather than stonewalling, he was able to bring it down to half an hour, 15 minutes, eight minutes, five minutes. People watching this video for five minutes of this couple's interacting were able to predict to 95% probability whether they would be divorced within a year or two. So these dimensions we're talking about are obviously quite relevant. So what, let's look at one of them, orienting towards your partner. So if my partner was sitting here and she says something, I, ori I look at her and I'm listening and I'm curious and I'm open to learning something and learning something not just about the world, but about her and her preferences so-called love maps of my partner. So learning more about her. Uh, and what does it take? Some mindfulness and being present. I'm not thinking about my work. That's three hours from now or tomorrow, the next day. I'm not thinking about what my self-esteem is reasonable. So I'm not thinking about why I'm not good enough. I'm not, be distracted. I'm not distracted by that. If I am, some cognitive behavioral work can be put on that. So things are not interrupting the mindfulness, other skill sets that are needed. Humility, I don't think I know everything. So maybe if I listen for a few seconds, I may learn something and on and on. There's no ongoing scars, emotional scars, or not that many in our, in the, from my past or in this relationship. So I'm not highly motivated. There isn't a transfer of anger from one part of my system to another. And if there is, I would need to address that. So see this, it's incredibly complex, but at the end of the day, these are skill sets that are clear, concrete and practicable. So as, as, as complex as it is, and it is to do it unskillfully, it's like saying, right, you know, flying a plane is complex. When you look at a cockpit of a 747, you know, it's like a station in NASA. Well, where do I even begin to press buttons, right? Sure, it's complex. There's only one thing worse than having to learn all that complexity. Having no ignorance, complete not, lack of knowledge of that complexity and trying to still fly that plane. That usually doesn't end too well, right? That plane is not gonna fly itself and landing is not gonna be pretty. Um, the other piece is actions more than words. Words are all nice and good. Someone once said, you know, Someone once said to their partner, you love flowers, but you cut them. You love animals, but you eat them. You tell me you love me, so now I'm scared. You know, words are one thing, but actions are something else. There was a wonderful psychological study that was done where they had a compassion conference and they did a study within the conference, which was just elegant. The conference took place in several buildings. On the way from one building to another, the participants of this compassion conference were walking from one building to another. There was a guy in the street lying there 
seemingly needing help, either hurt somehow or and calling out for help. These people who participants of a compassion conference or walking from one place to the other, stepping over this person and hardly any of them stop to help on their way to the next talk about compassion. So what we're saying is we can talk to a blue in the face and read a lot of pretty words, but what is actually happening here and now when someone says something, when someone needs something, do you just stop, take a breath and listen with some empathy and maybe help with some compassion? Empathy being the emotion, compassion being the action. So we're, we're, um, we have the opportunity to practice this stuff on a daily basis, right? And, uh, and sometimes we just really lack awareness. Uh, there's another fun joke of a woman giving her husband a silent treatment for a week, at the end of which he says, hey, we're getting, pretty, we're getting along pretty well lately, huh? It's like, so both of them are probably lacking some skill here. One is silent treatment. The other is just sh such cluelessness to what the silent treatment means. Uh, and, and why? Because, oh, if there's something wrong, there would be screaming and yelling because we're so used to that. So getting unused to what we've been used to is another piece of this whole thing because we all are bringing in a whole lot of baggage from our history from our parents. Hey, my parents yelled and screamed at each other, so that must be okay, right? No. Five-year-olds yell and scream at each other. How is it that in decades we haven't learned to do better? It's like, come on, we're adults here. Take a breath. Meditate for a few minutes a day. Learn something about our, my, I, I need to learn something about my cognitive distortions. When I say you're always doing that, is it really always? Or it's horrible that you're doing so-and-so and catastrophizing and so on. So as ambitious as this stuff sounds, you know, we can run a four, less than a four minute mile. We can fly, you know, a Boeing 747 in the cockpit if we simply apply some of the skills to our everyday life. And, and that's, that's a central message to be much more ambitious and going back full circle to resilience. And if, if we practice these skill sets, the mindfulness, empathy, gratitude, humility, low cognitive distortions in terms of, there'll be a grand canyon between us and stress. So the default is we will come across as phenomenally resilient, but we're not even responding to the, to the stressor to which it seems like we're being resilient too. It's simply who we are. When someone, I, I, was, I took martial arts for a long time and one of my uh, teachers had this wonderful example of the freedom we have to choose how we respond to life. If you're in a bar and somebody's drunk and, uh, and uh, confrontational says, hey, what are you looking at? One, one useful response is, I'm looking at your jacket, it's awesome. You know, just wanted to mention that. Imagine their feeling at that point when we, we would say that, that we're not butting heads, we're not getting to a power struggle because we don't have to. Is that resilience? Yeah, to some extent, we've, we're able to not engage in that conflict. Sun Tzu, the art of war had a wonderful line. What's the best way to win a war? Not to have to fight it in the first place. It saves a lot of time and energy and heartache on both sides. And so the resilience becomes a byproduct of the way we live, it's, oh yeah, by the way, in addition to all these amazing skills and the ways we live with joy and awe and gratitude and graciousness and mindfulness and emotional intelligence, by the way, there's another nice feature. We don't, we rarely feel the need to yell and scream and insult. And so it's almost like there's nothing to be resilient to, especially if we're joining, like I said, like I mentioned in the beginning, right? It's pulling the weights off our legs too. We can be very skilled in running with weights on our legs, but what happens when you take the weights off? So why, why not do both? And so, and the question is, what are we waiting for, right? Some people once said, uh, 
a comedian had a wonderful line. He said, uh, um, we'll be happy when we retire. We'll be happy when later in life. Uh, and then he pointed out, saving yourself for happiness for later if, is like saving yourself sexually for marriage. Because, oh yeah, married people have sex just all the time, especially with kids. Um, there's some disappointment married people have when, uh, when their expectations are not met. And, and that's a fun joke, but in general, pushing things to the future uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't usually bode well. So maybe we'll just finish with this quote by Hillel that some of you have seen on the bottom of my signature page. Uh, if I'm not for myself, then who is for me? Self-care, build skills, live skillfully, joyfully, and do it daily as a practice. If, if I'm not for myself, then who is for me is the first part. If I'm only for myself, then who am I? Sharing that with others, empathy, compassion, ego transcendence to others. And if not now, when? So if I, I'm not for myself and who is for me, self-care. If I'm only for myself, then who am I? Care for others. And if not now, when? What are we waiting for? So I'll just finish with that and wish you well and using your opportunities to practice and wish you joy in your life and in your relationships and that you know that it's possible. And I think if you walk away with that message, then I think it was a useful morning and I appreciate your time and sharing with you. Yes, very useful morning. I love it. Thank you so much, Shawnee. You always bring us such wisdom. And I love what you said. Re resilience is a byproduct of how we live. And this one uh, there becomes a grand a canyon between us and stress. It's simply um, who we are. And I, I really had not thought of resilience that way, but it makes so much sense and really clarifying. You, there's not... Um, it's a byproduct of, of how we live. I love, I love that. Thank you for sharing all of this. It's unlearning uh, less skillful, skillful patterns and practices, right? Taking the weights off. <laughs> it's perfect. So many quotable moments in that talk. Perfection. Okay, so what we're going to do is hop on to the workshop link where I know that this discussion will continue. Um, and it's 11.23, so we have a few minutes. So we're, we're gonna just kind of bypass the Q&A so that we can all go get a drink of water and hop onto our Zoom link for, for the workshop. Um, Pat says, thank you, always good to hear your jewels of wisdom. Yes, he is full of them. Shawnee, those were such perfect thoughts for me today, says Beverly. Thank you for being here with us, Beverly. Thank you, Shawnee, lots of gratitude flowing in, flowing in on the feed. Uh, we do love and appreciate you, all the wisdom you bring to us. So many, so many gems here. I'm probably going to pop, pop them in the comments later, all these little quotable, <laughs> very quotable moments here. Some really good aspects to look at and think about, Shawnee. Wonderful talk. Thank you, Shawnee. So good to see you again. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your love and gratitude. We love you. We appreciate you. We're so glad when you jump in with us. So you can find Shawnee. Um, I'm going to post it right here. Oh, is it not going to link? I'll put it here in a minute. It's wisdomtherapy.com or mm -hmm. org. Yeah, com, okay. I think. yeah. So I'll pop it in here and then everybody could check that out. And we look forward to when you come back with us and we will see everybody in just a, six minutes on the zoom link. Thank you so much for um, all of your generous support to our community. We feel this outpouring of love each month. Um, and we continue to be able to inspire East County and beyond with all of your generous contributions. So we wanted to say thank you for that. I'm going to close with the prayer of transformation and I will see you on the Zoom link, which is on our homepage, brentwoodilc.org. And I will pop it in here um, in just a second when we close out. And so either way, just jump in there. We will see you there. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God directs us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is and always shall be. And we are divine. You are divine beings. Blessings, everybody. I will see you in just a few minutes. Thank you, Shawnee. We appreciate you. Thank you. All you do.